Farming isn't the most popular career choice as we all know. It's usually people that belong to a family of farmers that continue farming. But even that has changed in recent times where families give their children a formal education so they leave farming and go to more stable jobs like engineering. However, the internet may be changing that. Farmers in the past 5 years have been using platforms like YouTube to share information regarding farming. This has created a community of farmers who share their knowledge with each other making it easier to grow their businesses which in turn makes it profitable for the next half billion. The next half billion or the NHB are the core of this podcast. They represent the second big wave of internet users in India, hence the term next. We define them as the cohort of 500 million first time internet users that have come online via their mobile phones in the last 5 years from 2018 to 2022. From a demographic standpoint, they are mainly from the bottom 60% of India's income distribution. They are owners of small businesses like uh, beauty salons, kirana shops, and also blue-collar workers, domestic workers, security guards, etc. They are building a greater comfort with tech and represent the hustle and ambition of an aspiring Indian. I am Nivedita, an ex-engineer turned comedian and writer. And I am Utsav, who also unsurprisingly is an ex-engineer turned market researcher, traveler, and podcaster. You're listening to Smartphone Nation. How the next half billion are shaping their future online. In today's episode, we tell you how smartphones have helped farmers in India access information and their customers faster and easier than ever before. Before we get into this episode, I want to introduce you to Badri Pillapakam, an investor from Omidyar Network India, a firm that invests in bold entrepreneurs who help create a meaningful life for every Indian. He has invested in several agritech companies and he understands the space intrinsically since he comes from a farming family and his father worked for over four decades at a tractor company. Here's what he has to say about the challenges in the business. So first of all, I think it's important to understand how existing markets work. So that's a state-driven topic. Oftentimes it's actually even local market-driven. So it can vary. So more than anything else, I think is a fair bit of confusion amongst the farmers in terms of what is going to happen to the produce once we make it and after that it is also different channels that they have to adopt so many intermediaries in the process price can vary significantly depending on the season controlled commodities you know what they're producing so there's some certain unpredictability on price and also some other challenges around time to liquidity once the post harvest is done and convenience of getting the payments on time well i'm no expert but that sounds pretty rough how much personal experience do you have with farming utsav hey my school was right next to an agricultural university so i've seen the crops change by the season uh, so you have zero farming background i see <laughs> hey hey wait wait you didn't you grow up in kenya that too in the capital city of nairobi you can only shame me for this if you're a farmer yourself Well, you know what? My grandfather was a farmer though. Okay, okay, that's fair. It's fair. But definitely better than what I have. I'm a pakka city boy. Yeah, they didn't like it though, and they definitely didn't want their children to marry into farming families, so they got all their daughters married to men with regular 9 to 5 jobs. Oh, so that was the beginning of farming going out of style. Probably. But with the internet and smartphones in the picture, a lot of urban people are taking to agriculture. Sounds like the right time for you to get out of the studio and onto a slushy farm. What's up? <laughs> In your dreams. Hey, but I agree. There are people leaving their cushy corporate jobs to pursue organic farming these days. But what about the people who have been farmers traditionally? I mean, it is a challenging and unpredictable career, but with the advancement in technology, things are getting easier it looks like. And that's what we're going to look at in this episode today. Take it over, what's up? Yes. And I want to tell you about Shamim Hussain. who hails from North 24 Paraganas district in West Bengal Boheragachi in the 28 years of his life he has seen his entire village have only one occupation farming which would make the whole village seem straight out of the film to bhiga zameen like most of the bengali countryside everyone grew dhan or rice and some vegetables as well but even the sleepy village of Boheragachi was touched by the telecom revolution by 2016 they had a mobile telecom network and soon after mobile data services by 2017 shamim had a smartphone so we were dependent on uh, fruits and vegetables but only through the smartphone we realized that you know there is a profit in apple also and uh, bear also so we started getting those saplings and uh, began to plant them 
we made money on that it basically started with my grandfather but since he passed away now it's me and my father who are doing it by 2016 he had completed his graduation but instead of sitting around looking for a job he decided to start a nursery every day from 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon shamim tends to the nursery where he looks after saplings checks the grafts and sprays insecticides to keep the saplings healthy His grandfather and father have been farmers so horticulture came naturally to him but there was a challenge his knowledge was limited and no one in his village knew much about running a nursery he turned to his smartphone yet again youtube mein search karke earlier if i had mahogany seeds for example i would not know how to grow them actually so i searched on youtube and i figured out a way i had about you know 69 70 varieties of mangoes which were from uh, countries including Japan, America, China. First, we used to taste ourselves and then sell. So earlier, we used to sell through websites and apps. In 2019, we took to Facebook and uh, YouTube also, where we started selling to customers directly. But even getting to this point was not easy. India is a low-trust society, and online frauds are so widespread that they have inspired a web series. In the neighboring state of Jharkhand lies the town of Jamtara. Featured in a Netflix show titled Jamtara, Sabka Number Aayega. The show revolves around a group of small town young men who run a lucrative fishing operation until a corrupt politician wants in on their scheme and a cop wants to fight it. It's funny that you mention trust because the co-founder and CEO of Farmart, Alek Sanghera, spoke to us about exactly that. Alek hails from Punjab. His grandfather was a farmer and like every kid who grew up in the 90s he went for summer vacations to his grandfather's home too. So he automatically understood the life and psychology of a farmer and it made sense to him to start Farmart instead of an e-commerce or fintech company. Farmart is a technology platform that gets both farmers and retailers on it allowing them to transact in a transparent manner. The company has built this on a simple but powerful insight about the lives of the farmers. Here's our lake talking about that insight. Somewhere along the way, right after doing five years of basically trying to target the farmer that we're going to improve their life, we're going to change how they operate, they need a product and service. What we somewhere realized that farmers actually don't care that what you basically that you're coming in like basically building something which is going to change their life. especially on the income side on the input side simply because too many people too many companies have come and lied to them so they actually don't believe you unless they see the result right in front of them and it's not hard to understand why farmers don't always trust people very recently india saw a prolonged standoff between the farmers and the government which led to a repeal of the newly proposed farm laws in fact trust is an aspect which repeatedly comes up in our multiple conversations with farmers That's why Alek felt that he had completely changed his approach towards building an agritech business. So what we realized is that the farmers wallet shares are not big enough for them to innovate on a new product especially when their incomes are dependent on the livelihood of basically that that crop right so then they're not going to be crazy innovators and like suddenly be crazy risk takers whereas anything you make them extra so for example if they are making let's say x amount and you help them make x plus y is where you build trust and then you can tell them to do anything they'll be they'll be all for it so what we learned from our journey is that it's far more easier to buy from the farmer than to sell to the farmer it's whether it's a product whether it's a service whether it's a technology whether it's a software it just doesn't happen that easily and if you on the other hand help them with anything on the on the buy side they are the best customers to work for uh, work with because simply they just like love they love you and they give you a lot of respect and you can make your business move fast in a very 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 high velocity so that's just been our learning and i think uh, it's also helped us in decision making in in top in situation where we feel that we know better than the farmer so it is helps declutter a lot of the decision making we make every day and while alik is solving this problem by building a saas led b2b food supply platform shamim has found a solution which works for him enter desi ingenuity or jugad sari customer din din so a lot of uh, customers would call in a day and uh, say that they would only pay me once they receive the product there were also people who would take the product and you know never pay me but most of my customers have been good people uh, so that's fine 
eventually i would ask my customers to first video call me so that you know they have a little trust in me and what i'm selling but facebook and youtube provided limited discovery to shami in a world where 4.1 million youtube videos are consumed every minute it's so easy for your content to get drowned out that changed once shamim discovered the krishify app which is friend from nagpur told him about now every day after 4 pm he logs into the app he speaks to customers advises them on how they can turn a profit he has customers not only from west bengal but also from tamil nadu and maharashtra the krishify app is attempting to put machine learning artificial intelligence and the android system to the best possible use for farmers across the country by providing a one stop solution to help them improve their financial situation krishify terms itself as facebook for farmers and it has grown by 5x in the previous 6 months and now has 5 and a half million farmers using its platform the platform puts farmers at the center allowing them to engage with other farmers retailers agricultural scientists and agri experts according to avinash kumar co-founder of krishify the platform provides two key functions information exchange and marketplace facilitation All this sounds a little too corporate though doesn't it Utsav like does this work for the farmers Oh yes of course it does I'll tell you all about that after the short break Welcome back Do you remember what Shamim was saying Farmers share their agricultural expertise and best practices with one another. They also discuss and receive answers to difficulties and questions about crop development and disease from their peers. In the same way, if an agricultural scientist conducts research, the results and information are shared on the platform. In a matter of just 5 years, Shamim has gone from selling in his local village bazaar to selling alongside state and national highways to selling online on Krishify. And unlike many flaky influencers one can find on social media, Shamim is a force to reckon with. He has over 6 lakh followers on Krishify. At the beginning of the sowing season every March, these followers form a ready base of clients. 6 lakh followers, huh? I'm hoping at least some agri brands are booking their tickets to Shamim's village because it looks like we're seeing the rise of the farmer influencer. Oh, you have no idea. One of India's top farmer influencers is farming leader on YouTube, who has almost 6 million subscribers. Listen to Dr. Venu Gopal, one such YouTuber and farmer from Karnataka. On the two years side, I saw that farmers were most accepting towards the people who give valid information. For example, information such as nutrition management for a crop, insect control, things like that. This information shouldn't be technical or written in complicated language. It should be like talking to farmers. Long format content doesn't work well here. People don't even watch 10 minutes of YouTube videos. Dr. Venu Gopal is right about people not watching videos for over 10 minutes. That's probably why Farming Leader makes much shorter and crisper videos that are around 5 minutes long. However, having successful influencers doesn't mean all is well. As per the WTO report, India stands in the 9th place in the world when it comes to agricultural exports. Agriculture is the largest subsector in the rural economy, contributing to approximately 37% of the total rural GDP in 2019 to 2020. The stats make it seem like agriculture should be sought after, but it isn't. Now consider the fact that we have 140 million farmers with land holding and another 150 million landless laborers. That's a whopping 300 million people involved in agriculture. and yet we only account for 3.1% of the global agri trade it's a pretty strenuous job and so a lot of people in farming eventually left for cushy corporate jobs with better job security this is slowly changing though some people are now moving from corporate jobs to farming even if it's not always the main source of income it still is a trend we're seeing gaining popularity Aruna was born and brought up in Priyapatna village of Mysore, Karnataka. He went overseas to study and continued to work there for a decade before he decided to come back home. Aruna's family have been farmers for several generations, so it was only natural that he also took to farming. However, it isn't his primary source of income. His main income comes from being an entrepreneur. Listen to Aruna explain why. To be frank, farming without a non-farming income is extremely difficult. If not for a non-farm income monthly, I would have quit farming long back. Especially when there were series of droughts in 2013, 15. 
it is extremely challenging. He also talks about how language barriers cause farmers to lose out on critical information while using products. A lot of times, farmers have applied herbicide, thinking that it's a insecticide. Because the Indian Pesticide Act mentions that the label has to be in either Hindi or in English. Interestingly, Shamim too had that problem. His initial request to Krishify was to have all the information in Bengali. But as is, farming is hard. And it's not just the physical labor aspect of it. Listen to Rajesh Ranjan, who like Alek, also came from a farming family. He also happens to be the founder of Krishify, about which we were speaking just a little while ago. Here's Rajesh. Major reasons, you know, that I see, there is land division method in India, right? So with increasing population, and this has happened at, you know, kind of all families. We have seen this, right? So the kind of land holding that we had, let's say, 50 years back, and today at an individual level, if you see, so of course, families grow, generations, uh, you know, come in, and land is limited, right? Arable land is limited. So with smaller and marginal land holding, farming becomes a bit difficult, right? Earning your livelihood in these times become difficult, right? So that's why people try to move away from farming. There are 140 million farmers with their land holdings. So one can imagine how small their land holdings must be. But for each set of farmers who have similar land holdings, there is a small set of them who do significantly better than their peers. So for example, if most farmers earn 50,000 rupees from an acre, these small set of people would be earning 5 lakhs. That's 10 times. Yes, and in the field of behavioral and social change, we would call them positive deviants. These are people whose uncommon but successful behaviors or strategies enable them to find better solutions to a problem as compared to their peers, despite facing similar challenges. Here is Ranjan again. What they have done, they have innovated, right? So for example, you know, I, I recently met a farmer from a place in Haryana itself, right? So his older generation was all into regular traditional field crops. And this guy is now growing strawberries, right? And earning the same, that the delta you can easily see, right? So people are getting more aware, right? They are open to experimentation. So let's say somebody has five acres of land, right? And today if they get right set of information and has that somehow that financial ability to spend a little more money on the input to try something different, they are open to experiment on 20% of their land. Right. And if they see the results are better, their net income is increasing, then they kind of, you know, keep on increasing that 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 experiment size, I would say. And over time, that becomes the mainstream farming. But without the information on how to go about it, it can get very tiresome and hopeless, especially when your living expenses depend on it. The internet has been a boon in this sense, giving farmers an opportunity to get their queries addressed as and when required. Also, there is one small trend I can see. A lot of people who are taking, you know, good formal education from tier one cities, metro cities, and then at least willing to go back to their roots where they can, you know, get actively into agriculture, right? So that that is a major change, a major trend. And uh, I can't say actively happening today, but at least, you know, while you are having conversation with such folks, even in my age group or my close network, right? And then we keep hearing news that somebody left some job, IT job, and actually went back and started farming and doing good today, has built some model farms. Let me introduce you to Saroj who owns her own organic business. Her father was in the army, so she doesn't have a farming background. But then she married into a family of farmers and had to learn it. She is well-educated with a BA, B.Ed. and double M.A. And she says she knew she could learn quickly if she could just get the information. That's when she started looking for tips online. So then uh, I taught myself gardening with the help of internet and YouTube. Then I learned how to make a drip irrigation system. The sprinklers we had earlier would waste a lot of water. I explained to my family that a drip system is better because it saves more water. And we started making profits after that decision. We started growing new vegetables and watermelons. And because of the drip system, which gained us even more profit. I also attended a meeting in Delhi where they talked about beekeeping and how profitable it is. So I started beekeeping and now I have started selling honey. 
So I've been watching and learning things about farming through YouTube and internet for two three years now. Clearly, the internet has helped Saroj a lot in her farming journey. But not everyone has access to the internet like that. In fact, Saroj has a funny story about her reaction when her husband ended up getting a smartphone. When my husband got a smartphone, they had just come out, and I didn't even know what it was. So I asked him. He said it was a phone. So, as a lady of the house, the first thing I asked him was the price. He said he bought it for forty thousand rupees. I was shocked. I told him we could have bought a bear for that money, and our kids would have had milk every day. I can't really blame Saroj. She makes a very valid point. But then, the journeys of the three farmers are unique in their own way. Saroj and Aruna had the education and ability to use smartphones in English or Hindi, but they lacked access to indigenous and modern knowledge about farming. Shamim had the knowledge, but lacked access to a community of farmers and customers. The smartphone empowered them both, solving for both the demand and supply side of the problem. Maybe I should think about becoming a farmer too. This is the right time. Don't want to be rude, but it sounds like a terrible idea right off the bat. <laughs> you seem like the kind of guy that gets too tired to function after a yoga class. So, okay, you never know, right? I might just be good if I give it a try. Sure, so I'd like to see you work in the field. Watching you fail repeatedly could be entertaining, but honestly, it's not just about using the apps, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm better off in the studio. But for someone like Shamim, life has changed, and it's not only his. So back in the day, people from Bangladesh uh, used to come to India to teach us crafting, and from them, a lot of boys in the village uh, learnt it. So initially, only they would do the crafting, but uh, soon after, you know, when smartphones came, they also started teaching everyone else in the village, and then slowly and gradually, people around the village as well. Over fifty years ago, Sir Norman Borlaug and M. S. Swaminathan ushered the Green Revolution. Which turned India from a net importer to a net exporter of food dreams. We are on the cusp of another revolution. This time, from the device which fits in the palm of your hand. Thank you for tuning into Smartphone Nation. I am Utsav, and I am Nivedita. This was Smartphone Nation. Tune in next week for another story on how the next half billion are shaping their future online. If you like our show, please subscribe to the Smartphone Nation YouTube channel. Don't forget to rate and review us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Share this episode with your friends as it helps the show reach more people. You can listen and subscribe to Smartphone Nation on the IVM Podcasts app or wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is also available in Hindi and Tamil. A special thanks to Omidyar Network India for making this season possible. To know how ONI is partnering with bold and purpose-driven entrepreneurs who are working to improve the lives of India's next half billion, visit omidyanetwork.in. Tell us what you think of the show. You can find our hosts on Twitter and Instagram. Utsav can be found on the Instagram ID at whywetravel42. You can reach out to Nivedita on Instagram at niv.prakasam. You can follow IVM on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the ID at IVM Podcasts.